Welcome guys, my, is, my name is Luthias, and yes, welcome to my latest in-depth survival guide where I will be showing you guys everything you need to survive on Orca Island, okay? We're going to be doing this step for step, so we're going through the first things that you need to think about when you spawn onto the island, like I just did right now. And then we're going to focus on all your resources in video one, okay? I'm not sure how long this series will be, but never mind the fact that I've been playing this game for five years or that I've got more than 3,000 hours on it. I have learned a couple of things in the last few months, which, which various people have shared with me and which I've picked up on my own as well. So, yes, this will be a very updated guide for any of you that have been with me for a long time. I promise you, I'm going to teach you guys a lot of things that I haven't um, told you guys about before. So, without any further ado, let's get going. Okay, the first thing you will need to do is go through your keys. Okay, so if you go, if you press escape and you go to controls. Um, or key bindings, okay? I want you to go through all the controls so that you get familiar with the controls. If you play other games a lot, okay, make sure that the keys are the same by, you know, like crouching or standing up or stuff like that. Just get familiar with that. And then very important is the emotes, okay? As you can see, F2 is hands up. Now, pressing F2 is going to save your life a lot because if you hold it in, you're going to hold your hands in the air and it's a friendly gesture, okay? It's a gesture of don't kill me. The second one is wave. That's also a friendly gesture, okay? And that's basically the only two that I use most of the time. Unfortunately, F2 to F4 is very close to one another, okay? So you can make a mistake by choosing the middle finger, and that can, you know, that can let you end up in a bit of trouble. Luckily, um, F5 and F6 is good as well for communicating with your friend. Okay, especially if you're, if you're playing with someone and someone is close to you. Then without talking in chat or over the voiceover, if you've got Discord, you know, it's fine. But if you, you know, if you want to use emotes, then you can go stop. You can say, come here. The problem is you've got thumbs up and thumbs down as well, okay? Where I I would rather, if I use emotes a lot, I would rather put thumbs up and thumbs down here and then maybe middle finger here. And then I'd use stop and come here and um, shh and point finger and whistle. I'll put um, at the other F keys so that they work together, okay? So if you communicating with the teammate then you can always um, have your keys close to one another so really try and you know reorganize those f keys so that they can help you okay and yeah just go through this make sure you're familiar with all the keys and then what i want you to do secondly is go over your crafting chart now g will be to open your inventory that's the default key okay so you press G and the two most important things you will get in Mistrated is a flashlight and a map. Okay. No, that was a bad sound. Okay. A, a flashlight and a map. So a map is going to help you a lot to navigate your way around the island. Okay. Because the map doesn't tell you where you are on the map, but you can use it for landmarkers going down roads, getting to, um, you know, road signs and stuff like that to try and figure out where you are. And then the flashlight's going to be very important to navigate your way through certain areas when it's dark or when you have to explore a cave or a very dark house or a bunker or anything. There's a lot of places that are quite dark and a flashlight will help you to, um, you know, loot a little bit more thoroughly. And then, of course, it will help you to, later on, you can get a small flashlight and you can get duct tape as well and you can attach it to your guns, okay, which is very helpful. So, yes, these are going to be the two main focus points, but I want you to go through the crafting system. 
Now, base building we will cover in this series, okay, but we're not going to handle that now. The first tab I want you to focus on is equipment, okay? So, when you start, I want you to focus on equipment and then I want you to focus on tools, okay? These are the tools that you can craft right from the beginning. The candle isn't going to be very necessary because that you can use in your base. But a hammer and a hatchet and a pickaxe and a fire drill and a torch is going to be very important for basic survival. And then, of course, your uh, bags are going to be extremely important because, as you can see, we've only got six slots open. So at the moment, we can just pick up six items and then we're full. And um, we've got weight as well. Okay, so that's the other thing that's limiting you. But for now, we've clearly not got enough slots open. And... Um, the fanny pack is going to give you three extra slots and the horseshoe pack is going to give you five extra slots. Okay, so that's more than double what you've got now. And then um, you can go look at the crafting. It's basically just headbands. And then the components are the second most important fact here. So you can see that with thatch, you can make rags. Okay, and then with rags, you can make rope. Okay. And the reason why that is very important is because if you go to tools, then you will see the best thing to start with is a hatchet. Basic um, item to defend yourself with, and you can get wood with that, okay? So that's one stick, one rock, and one rope, okay? So clearly we know we need rope, but to get rope, we need rags. So either we need to find rope directly, or we need to um, get rags, or we need to craft rags. And then later on, what we're going to do is we're going to go to weapons and then we're going to go to um, ranged weapons and then we'll see we need four sticks one rope and two rags for a bow okay so i don't want you to move through this game as fast as possible so i'm going to get give you the beginning steps right in the beginning okay what you need to focus on is your voice over ip now this is going to help you a lot um to communicate with people that you run into okay we're not gonna cover pvp at this moment but it's very important that you know about this so if i double tap caps lock then everyone around me can hear me now you can see the little speaker there everyone can hear me so if i'm if i'm not explaining things like i'm explaining things now then i can keep this on okay if there's not a lot of noise in my room I can keep this on constantly so that if I run into someone, I can speak to them immediately instead of, you know, trying to um, get to the caps lock key and maybe in that time, you know, they decide to shoot me. So this will help you to communicate with people even if you hear them, even if you don't see them, if you just feel anyone's around you, you can start talking immediately and it's a, it's a very great way to communicate with strangers in game. Now, if you keep in your middle mouse button, okay then you're gonna whisper can you see that the volume bar isn't going up very high okay so if someone is very close to you then you want to keep in your middle mouse button to just talk to that person and we can use this for um pve as well which i will show you later so i'm leaving the middle mouse button and i'm talking to um, my voice is reaching very far and then i'm keeping in the middle mouse button and i'm whispering to everyone around me okay and then except for that you can hold it in as well so i'm talking when i leave the caps lock it's off i can hold it and then i can leave it okay that's also another option so if you run into someone and you don't want people to hear what's going on in your room or in your environment if you see someone get to the caps lock immediately and just hold it in while you're talking to him it's like push to talk okay that's if you're holding caps lock it's like push to talk and if you double tap caps lock it's like voice activated okay just like in discord okay now that we've covered that um every chat has got three distances except not the voiceover if you press enter then this chat box here has got three distances so if i type something in everyone in a large radius around me is going to see what i typed in local is is um more closer to me and then whispering again is if you've got a friend next to you and you can see you know someone in the distance and you guys don't have discord or whatever or you've just met one another 
then you can use the whisper key so that just he can see what you've typed. Okay? Again, strategic that you can just see. And if you hear someone close to you, you can talk to them in the in the chat channel as well. And then no one will, not everyone will see, you know, see what you're saying. Just the person very close to you. And then you've got basic commands as well. Like you can go um, exclamation mark server, exclamation mark base, exclamation mark um, restart. That means when is the server going to restart? You can say exclamation mark uptime to see how long has the server been up since Inmus created servers restart every 12 hours on official servers. Okay, so you can know how long the server has been going. Okay, and then... You will always spawn in the southern part of the map, okay? So if we go to our map quickly, I'm going to press um, 5, okay? Come on. 5. Oh, <laughs> oh, guys, sorry about that. I've got the chat up, okay? So I'm going to press 5, and then I'm going to lift it up. And then I'm going to use my right mouse button to zoom in. Okay. And then I'm going to use Alt. Alt is to free look. Not just at the map, but even when you're running around. So you can see this is a nice clear map. And here at the bottom, this is where you're going to spawn. The more you move to the middle of the map, the better the loot will become. But the more dangerous it will become as well. And if you move right to the north, then you've got this major... Um, bunker here which is the most dangerous um, area in the game and then you've got the hospital which is very dangerous and you've got Hayward Valley that is very dangerous and this part of the map here is extremely dangerous on a full server as well Orca Dam, Clyde Hill and then all the checkpoints okay right there so yes you can spawn um, near Cape Bay as well but basically from there right down to the south is where you're going to spawn. It's a bit safer and the loot isn't phenomenal. But like I said, the more you move north, and the better the loot is going to become. Okay, and if you can see that red radiation sign there, that is a radiation zone, which you can get great loot at. Okay, so to, to get to good loot isn't going to take you long. Okay, just know that you, you're spawning in a very safe zone. And... As you can see, if I press tab, I lower whatever I've got in my hands. And if I press tab again, I raise it. If you don't do, if you don't use tab, then you're going to lower whatever you have in your hand automatically. And you'll have to press your le left mouse button once to raise it and use it. But again, if you're idle with that, it's going to lower itself automatically. And then, of course, we've got our torch. Okay, our torch to help us see everything. But... The main focus point here is that we haven't got anything to defend ourselves with. Okay, so we have to start with something to defend ourselves with and, you know, start exploring. So since we need rags, I'm going to press H. H means I'm holstering anything that I've got in my hands. What you're going to need to start with is single houses like that because you're going to start in the forest 80% of the time. Okay. So when you start in the forest, you want to focus on areas like that, um, single houses that aren't part of large towns, okay? And then you're going to want to focus on those bushes. Not that small bush, not that small bush, not any other bushes, the bushes that look like that specifically. It's got like in very, um, you know, all the leaves are in every single direction. It's a very rough bush. And when you walk into this bush, it's going to give you an option. Like there, search bush. So when you search it, it's going to give you thatch, thatch 70% of the time. And then the other 30% of the time is going to give you sticks. So you just keep moving through the bush. Okay. And then again, there's thatch. And you can move very quickly through the bush or you can just take your time. When you start out the game, don't rush it. Okay. Just take your time. This game is going to keep you busy for a very long time. Okay. So we're just moving through the bush slowly but surely, waiting for that to come up. And then, like again, this bush, not going to give you anything, okay? It's too small. You're looking for this wild, this wild bush. And this wild bush, okay? So you're just going through here, 
and a lot of the times you do get nothing um, but yes you just keep running through these bushes there's, there's two more and then yeah I don't know if there's a mutant here but let's just go through that and I'm going to go through a, a few of these bushes and then I'll get back to you now okay okay so I'm not going to cover too many bushes I just went through the bushes in this area so as you can see I got 17 thatch and four sticks okay so we go to crafting we focus on equipment and then we're going to go to components and we're going to craft rags very quickly okay so now we can craft the rope because we've got eight rags and then we can go to tools and we can craft the hatchet so we've got four rags okay and we've got a rope there a rope will always go into your belt like other items so we need a stick which we've got and we need a rock okay now a rock is very easy to find you'll find it near um roads and near gravel like this okay so if you can see any kind of rocks that's where you're going to pick it up um so let's go to the hatchet and there we go now at least we you know, we're not running empty-handed we've got a weapon okay so now i want you to get a weapon before you run towards a house because a lot of the times houses do have uh, mutants you know near them and you can see it's not dark but i mean it's very easy to miss something and now there's a mutant inside there and you will see that he can break down a door it's going to take him it's going to take him some time so i'm going to pull the door i'm going to use the scroll wheel and pull the door okay and if we didn't have a weapon you know we wouldn't have stood a chance he hit us twice and we're sitting with 80 percent health so clearly we know this guy with the spike on his arm does 10 percent damage but that we will cover in the next video so when you go into a house and you don't hear anyone around you go to your torch just to make sure you're not missing anything okay and what i want you to focus on is to make sure that you get to two lumber from every one of these pellets and then you want to go through everything that can give you rags okay because of course you know we need rags if you get something like pants and you've already got a pair of pants tear it into a rag okay to get to your objective quicker and yeah we're just gonna every time there's a scroll wheel you can interact with it do not interact with the item with house items okay clearly in the bushes there was no scroll wheel but when it comes to items in the in in houses you need the scroll wheel otherwise you can you can let something spawn like a cockroach or a spider okay which is gonna waste a bit of your time and then of course you know it's just gonna um, bother you a bit and that's not what you want right in the beginning so again just take your time look jumping is going to be very important because you want to look at everything okay this this might seem like empty book racks but there could be a hidden place here that will pop up and hidden places gives you really cool loot even this mattress can be a hidden spot so make sure you scan your eyes over everything okay and yes we're basically done here and yes let's go to the next chapter now before we go exploring okay i need to focus on certain things and here we can get a backpack okay which gives us 15 slots and that is fantastic but that is not what we're going to focus on you will get a lot of times where you start looting especially on a populated server and people would have already taken this okay on a populated server people are running around all the time and it's not that easy to find the loot that you're looking for because this door could have been open and then this backpack could have been taken okay so we're going to ignore that backpack just get our weapon again and now we're going to focus on 
the main focus of this video is to tell you guys how to live as long as possible and there's only five statistics okay basically one two three four five there's six things that can lead to your death in miscreated now the first thing is your health as you can see we were on 80 percent and in the short space of time we we're getting back to 100 percent and that is because our water i'm just going to press enter here that is because our food and our water is above 50 percent so it's in the yellow okay as soon as it goes into the red like close to 30 percent or something like that as soon as it goes red you the lower your health goes when it's red then at a certain point you're not going to heal anymore or you're going to heal very very slowly and then if your food and water is in the yellow then you're going to heal at quite a good rate okay and then if both these resources are in green or full you're going to heal to the maximum speed you can okay but the other thing that you can do is holster your weapon just going to exit here holster your weapon and press comma okay and now we are sitting we're just sitting on the ground okay with our legs crossed and now we can just relax and when you sit down there are three advantages your food and your water goes down slower okay because you're not using any energy and um, and the sitting has specifically got a benefit for you if you lay if you lie down or you stand still yes it will be a benefit but sitting is the biggest benefit you've got here that's why we've got that function to relax and to let the game know okay don't let our resources go down too quickly and then heal much faster then the second way to get your health up is through bandaging yourself okay the first way of bandaging yourself is a rag a rag will basically let your health regeneration boost with 20 percent and then it will get rid of a bleeding marker and of course you can get bleeding markers for any reason a mutant hitting you someone shooting you um you know something exploding next to you there's a lot of reasons for you to get a bleeding marker and a rag will get rid of that and then on the server i've probably got all the guides but right at the beginning when you go to equipment then there will be medical now this bandage you can craft with a bandage and rubbing alcohol so you do find bandages in the world okay and a bandage will heal you for 30 percent health regen boost but if you take a bandage and rubbing alcohol which you get in the world you will heal for 40 percent okay much faster and then this is the big daddy and for this you're going to need a medical guide so if you start the game you click here it's going to tell you you need a medical guide okay and at the end of the guide every single guide i pick up in this series i'm going to put in the kiosk okay and then i'm just going to share it with anyone that wants it okay so if you're really looking for a certain guide and you can see i've got it in the kiosk then you just ask me to meet you at your official server that you're playing on and i'll give you i'll give you that guide you just bring me the m coins okay and i'll take that guide out for you no problem but this this bandage will give you a 60 percent health regen boost and it will get rid of a bleeding marker plus it will get rid of poison or sickness which is the um six okay which is the last points that we're going to cover here so this is the this is the big daddy and if you're picking up water bottles a lot of people want to use canteens or they use various options to get their water up but just remember a water bottle that might not you know that you might not want to carry with you it's going to help you and healing mushrooms are going to help you as well a lot of people just use healing mushrooms to get rid of sickness and poison but with this healing mushroom and the water bottle and a bandage you're going to get the best of all worlds okay so this is really the best kind of healing method that you can get so that covers the healing okay then we're getting to water now when it comes to water then you can drink out of any water source like um, the river the ocean um and that's a very fast way of getting water so if you feel you're going to die 
Just go to any river or the ocean and drink water directly from that. You're going to build up a bit of radiation, but we will show you how to get rid of that radiation. Okay, so in extreme circumstances, use that, those sources. Clean sources of water is going to be water barrels. And of course, water sources that you get in towns, but the water barrels you get in the back of trucks and in various locations. It's big, white um, square looking water bottles and you can always interact with them to see if you can get water from them okay so that's a great resource of pure water then you've got your soda cans and energy drinks and stuff like that that you can get in the world or um, canned food which gives you a bit of water as well so you get various other items in towns or in houses or in kitchens which can help you with water and then of course you can make a few items in your base to catch capture water through rain and um, to purify your water in a um, you know in a um, with a fire you know and a canteen and then the the big the, the safest way for you to, to do it is to get a plastic or a metal canteen fill it up with any kind of water and then just use a water purification um, you, you know, water purification tablet to purify that water Okay, which we will be covering in this guide as well. The other thing is torpidity, and torpidity is when you when you're gonna pass out. Okay, now torpidity gets gets higher when you get thrown with rocks. Like compare torpidity to dizziness. So when you get thrown with the rock, you get hazy. Okay, and you will see that in your stat. The torpidity stat will come up. It literally says zzz next to it. Okay, it has a zzz next to it. That means when you're going to pass out. If you get thrown by too many rocks, which mutants throw you with, you're going to pass out and it's going to take you quite a while to get back up. Okay, so you can get killed in that time. People can find stuff like bean bags um, in a shotgun so they can shoot you to let you pass out. You've got sleep, um, sleep gas grenades which can let you pass out. And then, of course, you've got... Um, various other ways, okay, where your torpidity can go up especially if you're taking a lot of damage from an explosion or a brute or something ferocious you know so just make sure that your torpidity um, is all right and if your torpidity is too high there are ways to lower it but i'll rather teach you how to stay away from those risks instead of going into your, your inventory you know trying to solve the problem and then We've got basically cold can push up your torpidity as well. Okay, so if you get too cold, then you can, uh, too cold too quickly, like with a blizzard, snow blizzard, you know, then you can pass out as well. Then you've got your stamina and stamina, let, let's just stand up here. Um, stamina can be taken away by jumping. So there you can see, let's just wait for it to get back to 100%. So when you jump, it's going to take 19%, okay, which basically tells us we can jump five times. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and that's about, you yeah. know, so yes, then we can't jump anymore. And then another way your topidity works is if you press Z and you lie down and then you basically um, hold shift and then you roll. Okay, so shift is normally for running, but again, you can see we can't roll because of the torpidity. So let's just see here. So clearly, clearly you can see that the rolling takes torpidity as well. Okay. So yeah, jumping, rolling, um, holding your breath, okay? Um, like if you've got a weapon and you're aiming down your sights, then your torpidity is going to go down quite slowly. So don't worry about that. And then swimming underneath water is going to let your stamina drain, okay? Sorry if I said torpidity again. We're covering stamina, yeah? And then, you know, various other activities um, like um, lowering and, you know, putting your gun up. Very small differences, but it's another thing to keep in mind. And then the last thing that we're going to need to cover is poison and sickness. So there are various storms that come along. 
if you get too cold, then you can get sick, okay? Or if you get affected by something negative, like a C4 has gone off next to my character and then the blast literally made me sick, okay? So that's very important. And if your radiation climbs too high, then you will become sick as well, okay? You'll literally throw up. And then even if you f eat food past 100% and you see your um, your torpidity has gone up, but you keep on eating food, then you will throw up as well. So never eat food or drink water past 100% because when you throw up, you're going to lose 50% of those resources. Okay? And then, yeah. Basically... When it comes to poison, there's a very big spider mutant that can spit you with poison and that will poison you immediately and blur your vision. Okay, so you don't really want to stay poisoned. And then you've got um, punji sticks, you know, like spikes which people can put next to their bases. And if they add um, a rotten apple to it, they can, you know, make it so that it poisons you when you walk over it. And then people can make arrows with um, rotten apples as well. So if you go to weapons and you go to arrows, then you'll see one rotten apple and 20 aluminium arrows, okay, makes 20 poisoned arrows. So if someone shoots you with a bone arrow with, you know, with a rotten apple applied to it, you're going to be poisoned as well. Um, and then there's weather, okay which can make you become sick as well, like I just said. And then if you get cold, like I said, you can get sick as well. Okay. So those are the main things that you're going to focus on when you start in your journey. Okay. Explore again, just getting your sticks and your rags and everything. So here, here you guys can see if I go to equipment, um, I can go, I can go craft another rope okay and then i can go craft another tool okay and i like torches because a torch helps you in dark areas as well especially in a cave and the big thing about a torch which i can show you here is never mind the fact that a torch can be lighted so you can press t and hit someone with a torch but you can press your left mouse button and light an area as well okay so that's not bad either and then of course if you press t in a side of cave you can hit mutants with a torch okay so a torch is very important and remember it just takes one rag and one stick so that is actually the quickest way to defend yourself right in the beginning is to make a torch because you don't need a rope so you don't need four rags. So this is the quickest way. You get two thatch, one stick, and you make a torch immediately for a defensive item. And then, of course, two sticks and a thatch can make a fire drill. And a fire drill is very important to light a fire. Okay? So there are, there are various ways for you to, to um, make food and stuff like that. So... Now that we know all the basics, let's run through all the food resources and how to how to get food, okay? And the first thing we're going to see here is an apple tree, okay? So an apple tree normally gives you four apples. can be rotten, it can be fresh, okay? So there's the rotten apple that you can use if you want to. And an apple gives you five, let's, let's just round it off, 6% food and 3% water, okay? So it's still a great item. So if we see how many apples we can stack. No space. We can only stack five apples. Okay. So that means for 0 0.2 kilograms, we can get six times five is 30. So we can get 30 food and then we can get 3.5 times five is... 7, 14, 17 and a half. We can get 17 and a half percent water. Okay, so if you use this one stack for apples, it's not going to weigh much and you're going to get 
30, you know, 30 percent um, food and 17 percent water from that, which is great because as you can see, our food and water is quite low. So after we've eaten five apples, we're a four away again. So the apples are the first way and luckily we're in a really great spot because I can show you another way as well. And that sound is probably a, some kind of storm coming. The second thing is berries. Okay, so we're just going to try and get one full stack here. Come on, baby. Give me those berries. Let's see there. Okay, full stack. So this weighs the same amount. And again, it's 33%. So it's 3.3 times 10. It's 33% food. And it's going to give us 17% water. Okay, and it doesn't weigh a lot, guys. That's the most important thing. Remember, if, you've if you're carrying a piece of meat on you that you've cooked and you're carrying uh, a water canteen, it's going to be close to 3.7 kgs, you know, or something like that. So, um, yeah, this is the things that you need to keep in mind. How many slots a certain thing is using and what it's going to give you. So, I'm just going to um, wait through the storm. Okay, I'm going to go and wait in this house. It's a nuclear winter storm. It's quite a quite a serious storm. And I think this house has got some kind of just gonna use the scroll wheel. So the scroll wheel puts you in third person. And then if you scroll in, it's gonna put you in first person. Oh yeah, and here's another food source. It's a chicken. So let's heat it with the fire. There we go. Okay, put the torch out. So here we go. There's a piece of chicken that gives us 10 food, okay? But it's got a 55% chance of poisoning us. That's not a problem because we will cook it, okay? And then it can't poison us. And you get eggs in here, which gives you a very small percentage food, but you can still get eggs. And then here is a great place to cook food. This is the coolest way to cook food, okay? But you need a, um, a gas bottle and then you need the fire drill which we have and you need, and you need other stuff but yeah this house has got an underground underground cover okay which is going to complete is going to protect us completely for, from the storm but let's just say you're not you know you're not that lucky to find underground cover i'm just going to wait through the nuclear storm inside the house okay and then let's see what we look like after the storm okay while the storm is going, this is one of the three most dangerous storms that happen in the game, okay, which you do not need to worry about. And as long as you can get into cover, like a house or anything that's closed up, even your base, okay, again, I can go downstairs and I won't have any effects. But um, the nuclear winter storm pushes up your radiation and it let, pushes up your coldness, okay, so if you're outside, it's definitely going to have a worse effect on you. The stick, but like I said, if you're in a house, you're fine. And as long as your radiation doesn't pass like 40%, don't worry about your vision. It's not going to be the end of the world. And we will deal with it later in these guides. And then the radiation storm is just going to push up your radiation. Okay. Quite high. So if you see a radiation storm starting, it's better to try and get into cover. Okay or you need to have a blue mushroom or anti-red tablets on you okay so doesn't matter how, ma how much radiation you get one blue mushroom and one anti-red is going to take that away and then coldness is going to dis disappear automatically because as soon as i start running around i'm going to heat myself up again okay so you can see that 35.2 or 35.2 35.3 so you can run around and running around will help you to get you know get your heat back quicker so we've got the 16 percent radiation and we're just waiting for these little um, after effects to disappear and then we're going to go uh, back to the food resources okay and this is going to be continuous guys every video i make is going to be continuous so in the next video, we're going to get rid of the radiation, okay, and stuff like that. But for now, 
what I want you to focus on is this thing does 25% melee damage and this thing does 30 melee damage. Okay. Might not seem like a lot, but, and the, of course the advantage is it gathers wood at a 75% gather rate. Basic terms for every four times you hit the tree is only going to give you three pieces of wood. Okay. That's what the 75% means. It doesn't mean like instead of one, you know, instead of, three pieces of wood or four pieces of wood you're going to get three pieces of wood just means exactly that for every four times you hit the tree you're going to get three pieces of wood okay if you use an axe it's going to have a hundred percent gather rate because for every shot it will give you a piece of wood which is much quicker okay now because we've got a light source and we've got food let's just use let's just consume this quickly And right there, you could see the top bar came into effect. The, the zzz factor came into effect. Or don't eat while that zzz factor, the topility factor is activated. But now we're going to go to a hatchet and I'm going to show you the easiest way, okay, to get food. Okay, guys, there's a deer. Okay, now the one option that you have is to let the deer see you and then run away. Okay, the best option to take is to flank the deer, just like you would flank in any situation. Make sure you don't make too much noise. Please don't hear me. No, okay, it heard me. Okay, so if a deer hears you, it's going to run away. Okay, so it's better to walk and not to you know, let him hear you. Then um, you can come from the back. And then just hit him, okay? But if he does detect you, you're just going to go into first person, keep running to him so that he gets tired, and then you're going to hit him, okay? Um, animal fat is important for the last episodes in our guide where we're going to create C4, but this is going to be the most important thing, is to get the meat, okay? And I'm going to show you a few other food resources, and then I'm going to show you how to cook the meat, okay? Okay, there's another deer. So I'm going to try and flank this one a bit wider. You don't want him to hear you. Okay, that one's going to see me. But we're not worried about this one. Oh, that one's turning now. But yeah, okay. If you come from the back and he doesn't see you, then you don't need to chase him, okay? You just knock him down and you can get the meat from him again. Okay, so there we've got five pieces of meat, the maximum. And now we're going to get to a road um, to get some rocks. But let's just see, do we need to get rocks? No, we don't. We can go craft the pickaxe immediately. We need a stick. Okay, so let's get rid of the torch because we have got a light source. And let's go hit a tree quickly with a hatchet. And then if we go to base building, we can turn a wood, a wood log into sticks. Okay. So now we can craft the pickaxe that we wanted to craft. Let's just see. It's going to get rid of the rope. Okay. One rock, one rope, and one stick. Oh. Okay, so we need a rock. Okay. What do we need to get rid of as well? Okay. We've got the deer meat. We don't need the chicken right now. Chicken is great, but we don't need it right now. So we're going to need to get to a rocky area to maybe get a rock. And there's a two-headed dog, guys. Uh, but how to kill mutants is going to be the next guide. Okay. So we're not going to cover that now. If you see a two-headed dog, keep away from it now. And then in the next guide, I'll show you guys how to survive every kind of mutant and PvE element in the game.
Okay, so next to roads, if we just look down, we'll get these rocks. Okay, and now we can craft the pickaxe. And now that we've got the pickaxe, we can replace the pickaxe and then just go look for any kind of rock near us. Of course, you can run down the road and go and gather 10 rocks if you want to. But that is not what we're going to do. We need the fire lighter. We can get rid of the stick for now. Yeah, we can get rid of the stick for now because we've got lumber. Okay. So let's just go to a rock. This is coal. Okay, we don't want the coal. So let's just go, come here to this rock. We're going to hit the rock and get 10 rock, 10 rocks. 2, 3, 4. Skip. 5, 6, 7. Skip. 8, 9, 10. Okay, and that's all we need. Now we're going to go to base building and utilities. And we're going to make a campfire. We're going to put the campfire down. We're going to use the scroll wheel and add the lumber to the fire. Then we're going to add the deer meat, which is going to be all five pieces. Okay. All at once. And then we light it with the fire, with the fire drill. Okay. And then we can just stay here. And then within three minutes, it will be cooked okay so set your timers to about three minutes and then it will be cooked but i'll get back to you guys in three minutes okay guys so as you can see while i was standing next to the fire i got heated so if you're freezing your butt off a fire will heat you up as well and the meat has been cooked so we just get food and we extinguish the fire okay um unfortunately we can't take the fire with us but it's only 10 rocks, which are very, very easy. And now the great thing is every single piece of meat is going to give us 40% food. 40 times 5 is 200. Okay, so we're going to get 200% of food for only 1 kilogram. Okay, and 1 kilogram out of 40 kilograms is not that bad. And then in the next episode, I will show you guys um, how to counter the storm. So we're going to heal the radiation. And we're going to get the items that we need to sustain us through any storm. And I'm going to teach you guys how to survive any mutant attack. And how to either stay away from them or how to defeat them. Okay? With strategy. So, to end this video off, I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please press the like button. If you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe. And then click that notification bell because... I will be doing a series and I promise you guys I'm going to give you information on every single aspect of Misgraded, which a lot of you wouldn't wouldn't know. OK, and even a few um, advantages that other people use that you don't know about. OK, so I'm going to teach you guys every trick in the trade and make sure that you and the best guys in the game can be on a level playing field, especially when you try and kill one another. OK. So to end this video off, I'm just going to cover all the kinds of food resources that you get. And I'll see you guys in the next video.
Okay, guys, I'm not going to pick this up. <laughs> uh, the server has got people on it, but it uh, looks like they didn't see this one. Maybe this one landed earlier today. But yes, look at this airdrop. Okay, two C4s, a flak vest, grenade, a rifle suppressor, <laughs> static rounds. Holy shit, this is a nice drop. This is a military drop. And yes, two C4s, very powerful. The ammunition, very powerful. The best rare pistol in the game, the M9A1. Absolutely love what it sounds like. I can just um, let you guys hear what it sounds like. So yes, really fantastic sounding gun. But this is not part of the guide. Just want to show you guys if you run onto an airdrop, it can boost you into a badass really, really quickly. And this is a phenomenal drop, especially the C4 and the bandages and everything. And of course, uh, MRE bag.